Hello, welcome to Inflatable Sup Authority, where I review paddle boards and give you tips and tricks. Today we will be reviewing the Sea Gods Carter Marina CX. We'll be going through the on-water performance features, what I thought when I was paddling the board. We'll also be going through things such as likes, dislikes, and the paddler group that I think this is appropriate for. Stay tuned. Who is the Sea Gods Carter Marina CX4? Sea Gods Carter Marina CX is a little bit more of a performance oriented sup, but it also offers good stability, especially compared to some other touring boards out there at 32 inches wide. It's great for bringing a bunch of gear with you on the board so you can see there's a bunch of bungee deck webbing at the front and rear. And it's also really good, I'd say, for even like multi-day touring destinations. The on-water performance is very good. Now I'll even show you at the front here, there's sort of like an uplifted nose rocker. You can kind of see that a bit. The nose uplifts in the water, which means that you get less drag and the, which allows the board to glide a little bit better. This is one of the faster subs I've tested. Even against wind conditions, I can safely say that I was making ground compared to some other boards I've tested. Even touring boards may not be as much. So you can see the bottom of the board here with this absolutely stunningly beautiful design. Very detailed as well. This is done by Jenny Kirby. She is a local Vancouver artist and she is best known for her nautical nonsense designs. So you can see this is a Kraken attacking an unsuspecting ship. I have no idea what that ship did to that Kraken, but he doesn't look very happy. I'll just quickly list off the specs as you can admire this design. So this board is 12 feet by 32 inches wide, six inches thick. It is 21 pounds. So it's actually pretty lightweight for a touring board. And that's thanks to its cross weave drop stitch technology, which means that you use less drop stitching, but the threads are thicker and they're reinforced with multiple threads. So that allows you to cut down on weight. And the maximum capacity of this board is 350 pounds. So you can put a decent amount of gear on here. You can probably even have a child, dog, and some gear as well as yourself. I'd say ideally though, it is for solo paddlers with gear, like I said, small dog, child, etc. The board is best served for intermediate paddlers. While you can have a beginner on here, I will say it will take a bit of getting used to, especially if you've never paddled a paddleboard before. But it's not, it's definitely more stable compared to some other boards such as thinner touring boards or even the 14 foot touring board that Sea Gods offers. This is the accessories that the Carter Marina CX comes with. So you can see it comes with a dual chamber pump, a really nice bag, I must say, very well made. And then a carbon hybrid paddle with a nylon blade. And then of course there's also the leash. And of course we've got the fin installed in the back here. This is a Sea Gods bag. So this is made of a canvas material. And you can see there's actually five handles on this bag, which I actually really do appreciate. Gives you multiple grabbing spots. Um, there's also some deck bungee here. I call it deck bungee, it's just called bungee. Strap things such as your um, light vest or bigger items there. back here. The back here is padded pretty well. This is a good amount of padding right here. You can see it's a good amount of back padding. There's also waist straps, which allows you to secure to your waist pretty well. There's also chest straps to make sure that everything is anchored right onto you if you need to go on those longer journeys. One of the things I really like about this package is the wheels. These wheels are just great, especially when you have a lot of stuff in this bag and you don't necessarily wanna carry it on your back, just wheel it. Now that we got the bag fully opened up, we'll just show you what's inside. One of the features I do appreciate about it is these fin pockets, which is kind of upside down. 
I really like, you know, just show you right here. I really like it whenever bags include fin pockets because whenever there's no pockets on the bag and you just throw it into the bag, it's a good way to lose things. So I do appreciate the designated areas that Sea Gods has, has with this bag. This is the Sea Gods paddle. So this is a carbon hybrid shaft with a nylon blade. It's actually very well designed. There's not a lot of sup paddles that actually have the angle like this one does. So that's great for whenever you're doing your paddle stroke and you want it even in the water, to get the most out of your stroke. Also a teardrop blade, which allows you to get a little bit more power out of each, each paddling stroke. You can see here we have carbon shaft, there's multiple locking points, which I appreciate. Whenever putting this pile together, I didn't have any problems, which is actually really nice because a lot of times I do have problems with paddles when I first get them, but this not so much. And I also really like this little line right here. It allows the paddle to stay in place, which is really nice. And it doesn't allow this handle to move, which is very much appreciated factor. I also really appreciate the carbon handle. This really contours your hand nice and it feels very nice to paddle, especially compared to plastic handles. I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same, but you got a nice little carbon grip, feels good and smooth on your hands and you can paddle for longer. This is the triple action dual chamber pump. So this has three settings. So high volume setting is number one. Number two is median and number three is high pressure. So in the beginning, you wanna do number one and that does all two chambers. Now we'll go through the pros and cons of the board. And really, there's a lot to like with this board. I really think it's such a well-made board and it kind of opens up the touring angle to more paddlers, I think, because it's a little bit wider than your standard touring board, but that also allows it to be a little more stable, which can encompass paddlers that are maybe in the beginner to intermediate level, as opposed to people that are just advanced. So in my testing, this board actually was fairly maneuverable, more than I thought so. Um, it had good reverse sweep stroke rating as well as side paddles. You can see my on water performance video exactly on how that went. Board also tracks pretty well. I wouldn't say it's the best tracking touring board I've ever tested, but it was pretty good. It did about six and a half strokes a slide, which is a good score. I also really like a lot of the bungee deck webbing at the front. You can put a lot of items in there. There's also the D-rings that allows you to put a kayak seat, or you can do your own rigging if, you are, if you're doing multi-day trips and you need maybe some like bungee tie downs, or even you want to strap on like a big cooler. I do like the rear and front handles as well. So just in the sort of midpoint of the board here, you can see there, there. The handles are good, especially for passengers. So with this board, I'd say you can have two people on it. It's a little bit bigger than the Skyla 11 foot three. So it can probably take on just a little bit extra weight. It's rated at 350 pounds maximum capacity until there's a performance decline with the board. So yeah, I mean, you can put two paddlers on there, although I think one paddler and a smaller passenger, so like a dog or a kid, is ideal. I also really like the splice deck pad. Like the deck pad, first off, feels very good on your feet. It grips well, but also you can see that it's actually different. Like it's not painted on there. So the different colors are spliced in there, which is really unique. And I really like the design of this specific one. Like there's a tentacle, I think that's awesome. Now onto the things that I felt could be improved with this board. To be honest, there's not a lot. Um, I think that this board is supposed to do exactly what it's supposed to do. There's really not a lot I can say where this board needs improvement. I mean, if you're classifying this as a pure touring board, I'd say maybe you want to 
make it a little bit thinner width wise but Sea Gods already has a proper 14 foot touring board so this is kind of a nice little in between and I've paddled this board in waves and white rock and it actually held up very well I have to say I also really do like this sort of nose the rocker especially allowed for minimum drag which is a nice little feature that I think they did for this board really improve the glide of the board for sure also like the fin it's clicking so that's pretty ideal you just click it in click it out you can see my demonstration of the fin on the Skyla CX board review so this board has a lifetime warranty and a 30-day money-back guarantee so the lifetime warranty is really the lifetime of the product, not so much the lifetime of you, the paddler. That would be a crazy warranty. Um, so looking at the Sea Gods website, I saw that they put a number to it finally, which is five years, which is still one of the better warranties around. Most high quality ice that manufacturers have at about that five year warranty. The warranty does not cover defects from a paddler negligence. So for example, if you have scratches, scoffs, you leave it in the sun too long and it pops, you have a too high of a PSI, etc. The manufacturing warranty will not cover that and that's completely understandable. The 30 day money back guarantee is if you do want to return it, there will be a 10% restocking fee and there will be, you'll have to cover the shipping charges. Do I recommend the Carter Marina CX? Yeah, I think it's a really good buy. If the quality materials incorporated with it are fantastic. Woven drop stitch is some of the best materials in the industry currently. It's very well made, very well detailed, even with the rails and the seams over here. It's just meticulously well designed. And it's also pretty lightweight for its size. So it's ideal for touring paddlers that still want a board that can carry some weight and be stable in the process. So having the opportunity to paddle both these boards, I just wanted to include this footage in case you're unsure which to get, because I'm sure a lot of people are looking at either or, so like either the Carter Marina CX or the Skyla CX. So which would I use for what? The Skyla CX, which is this paddle board right here, I would use for more sort of like all around purposes, like day paddling would be perfect. Even if you're on the water for more than a few hours, this is a really good board for that. But it has more all around paddle board characteristics and that's because it is a little bit wider in length. You could kind of even see between the two boards, the width. So what would the Carter Marina CX be for, used for? This would be more the designated touring board for those who still want some stability and want to load the board with a bit of weight. For those who want to maybe do, even do multi-day trip, this is probably the perfect board for that. I mean, both boards do have quite a bit of bungee deck webbing on them, but I do feel like the on-water performance, especially the speed, was a little bit more impressive with the Carter Marina CX. And that's simply because of the nose. The nose is a lot more uplifted, so there's less drag coming to it whenever you're paddling harder strokes. As opposed to the Skyla CX, there was a little bit more water disturbance whenever I was paddling harder, even when I was looking at the nose. If you want to compare and contrast these two boards on water performance specs, take a look at my other YouTube videos, which I will link right at the top. Till then, see ya.